What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to a really exciting video. Today, we are going to be reacting to the first story in Somnophobia, which is Somnophobia, <clears throat> because I have not read it yet. Um, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Somnophobia is due to come out in two months, or just less than two months, I think. It's, it's more like six weeks. Uh, and it has already been leaked by Entom. So, um, just saying, if you do get the book early, it's probably best not to leak it. So, I would say thank you to- well, okay, thank you, Entom, <laughs> first of all. Um, but, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Um, but it's cool. Uh, so we're gonna be reading through the leaks for Somnophobia. This is the first time I'm trying this video, so if you enjoy it, then make sure you like and, uh, and tell me in the comments. But we're gonna get into the leaks, and I'm going to react to this story. Apparently, all three stories in this are incredible. So, I cannot wait to get into this. Let's go. Somnophobia. So, we begin with the preview summary. So, Sam and his friends spend their time... I, I did a video on this. I did an audiobook reading. Uh, Sam and his friends spend time with their friend Rad on his birthday at the Mega Plex. He wishes to obtain a miniature snow globe-like device called the Dream Sphere that heightens your consciousness once it has once it is activated. Essentially, it takes information from every open book in the room and sums all of its knowledge up into one digital projection. For example, opening a geography book made them end up in Giza. Yes, uh, <laughs> and then I, th I think it was Entom who made a joke about um, using the Dream Sphere on in in the flesh. That, <laughs> that is uh, questionable. Um, now Rod made a deal with his friends about circulating the dream sphere around their friend group each week. And now it is Sam's turn. Hmm, interesting. I, I just don't remember that. Anyway, what's that? His mum asked. It's a dream sphere. It helps you study. We wanted the mega pizza plex for Rod. And we're each taking turns using it. He's a weird looking guy. He's a weird looking little guy. Helps you study, huh? Helps... How about helps you kick crazy diets and encourages you to eat pizza and cake like a normal teenager? Mom, my, fi my digestion is 50% better on my new meal plan. And I'm more energised if you haven't noticed, it's the new me. Nope, still the same kiddo I know. Handsome as ever though. Hey, this is foreshadowing. I'm calling it. I'm calling that that is foresha foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, he laughs at that and thinks she's joking. Nonetheless, the normal teenager comment was a joke since he's so stingy over stingy, sorry, of a diet and is somewhat germaphobic. His mother is the strongest person he knows ever since his dad died. She did whatever she could as a single mom not to pers only, uh, sorry, to not p only pursue her dream as an artist, but take care of Sam. His father died in a motorcycling accident. He was a biker dad. <laughs> uh, it skips the next day. It was in the night after the Pizza Plex visit, so he had to go to bed. Dim in his room after school. At this time, he is contemplating on using the dream sphere. His tall bookshelf was lined with books about digestion, germs, and making smart choices. On the top of the shelf, his favorite picture of him and his dad sat there. Oh no! I just realized this could be so bad. This could be such a cursed story. The picture of his is of him sitting with his dad on his bike before they went out for a father-son ride. He decides to open a textbook about English literature and ocean science to study for his upcoming exams, plugging the sphere into the outlet and setting his wristwatch to 10 minutes. Plugging in the dream sphere to the outlet on his bedside table, he pushed the on button. Here's something cool, okay. Every time he turns the dream sphere on, it glows and the hypnotic transition of moon drop waving at him projects into his consciousness. That's really cool, he does a little dance and signature giggle average moon drop behavior. Okay. I I really like how they're referring to him as moon drop. Does that mean that the official name for this for the animatronic is moon drop or is it just in this situation that it's called moon drop? I have a feeling this is the canon name. I think moon drop has to be, right? It kind of has to be. Um Moondrop turned and the lights flashed across Sam's face. After a moment, he began to feel that slow, heavy feeling sink over his body. It felt so surreal that he wondered what would happen if he stood up, but he didn't want to chance falling over and hurting himself. Words floated out of the notebook, dancing before him and then fading into the air. First, he appeared right in the middle of Hamlet. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. The words from the performers were spoken naturally. He felt as if he was witnessing William Shakespeare's imagination at play right in his mind. 
I reckon this is also foreshadowing. <laughs> Not gonna lie. The textbook is like cover uh, converting the literature into a visual description, basically from what I'm reading, which makes you understand info better, as I said above. This sounds amazing. I want it. <laughs> he tries adjusting his glasses, but then realises he's not wearing his glasses, although he realises he can actually see clearly in the dream state without them. Another moon drop transition happens, and he's thrown into the ocean. <laughs> oh my god! It's so trippy, he's swimming to the ocean floor as the notes from the ocean textbook fly out and transform into visual projections of the sea creatures, in which just li simply looking and observing them is enough to summarise all the information in the book at once. It is described as a vivid dream state, as he can feel and touch things as if he was really there. I'm getting vibes from from the AR booth in Under Construction, honestly. He can feel and touch things like he was really there. Uh, he sensed the coldness of the water, but it wasn't overwhelming. A school of fish scattered away as a pod of humpback whales swam close by singing a song. Though even in a dream state, his mind specified that humpback whale songs were made of groans, grunts, and whistles most of the time. As the whales swam by, the most peaceful feeling came over him. Um, he reached out a hand and touched one of the whales. He could have sworn the eye of the whale actually looked at him. The songs of the whales seemed to glide through ripples of water. Can you believe this is FNAF? <laughs> Seriously? He doesn't want to step on the turtles. Aw. He feels at ease, and then he hears the echo of his alarm going off. It echoes through the dream reality, and he has slowly woken up. Okay, so he's kind of like in a trance? That's interesting. What if he never escapes? Oh no. That's gonna happen. It's gonna be where he's in the dream sphere, but he cannot escape. It... That kind of gives me Stranger Things vibes. You know when like Max was in the air and the only way to kind of pull her back to reality was by playing the music, uh, playing a favourite song. Kind of distracts her and, and she could free herself from Vecna. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, at first he is awoken with sadness but then a huge smile appears on his face. That was fantastic. Sam jumped up and did a little dance as he looked at himself in the mirror. What? <laughs> okay. Okay, Anton, you are interesting. Uh, he could admit it was odd to see a smile on his face. The experience transformed him. He had never felt a rush of happiness in forever. Such a rush of happiness in forever. He even flexed his arms and wondered if he could start lifting some weights. He's so happy. He smoked. Yeah, that good shit. <laughs> He's so happy he wishes to do an act of kindness and decides to make his mother's favourite dish to surprise her when she comes home from work lasagna. Now later, when his mum came home, his, her eyes widened in surprise. If I walked into the wrong apartment, nope, this is your home with your son making you your favourite gluten and processed cheese lasagna, do I care? No. What is this? What, what has brought this upon me? Uh, Sam knows it's the dream sphere and feels guilty, so in, instead says he wanted to show his appreciation for everything she's done for him. His mum's mouth popped open. Even the bathroom? No, I, no I'm not that happy. Uh... <laughs> Mum walked and put her hand to his face. You don't seem warm. You sure you're feeling okay? Sam shrugged her hand off. Mum, stop. I feel fine. Just trying to do something nice. Her mum brushes it off, but finds it odd. She then goes to get dressed, and they have their dinner. Um, we're then immediately skipped to the next day again after school. This story gets to the point a lot. There's not much useless filler, thankfully. The next day, Sam eyed the dream sphere in his bedroom. While at school, he'd replayed this session from the day before over and over in his mind. It had felt surreal, and yet so real. It was like he travelled to other worlds, right from the confines of his bedroom. Oh no, many worlds theory again. He really wanted to extend the experience just a little longer. This is giving me vibes from under construction, honestly. Like, honestly, a lot of stories in Tales are about something not being real. Have you thought about that? Like, okay, yeah, there's the theory that Lally's game, like, Lally isn't real, but no. Um, <laughs> Under Construction was all like a fake simulation. Um, Help Wanted was like a fake house, catfishing, all of that stuff. Uh, what else is there? That is basically it. Oh, B7 kind of, because he, he had a mental health problem and didn't realise he was a robot. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I didn't realise he was human, he thought he was a robot. Um, the next day, Sam... Uh, oh, never mind. He really wanted to extend the experience just a little bit longer. Hey, so you're supposed to use the 
sphere 10 minutes a day according to the instructions. Sam, on the other hand, oh no. I bet it would be fine to go for, say, 15 minutes. Five more minutes can't do much harm, can it? Why? Why? He opens his government social studies notebook to study, setting his timer for 15 minutes. The cool thing about this story is remember that transition that happens. It's always segmented in a paragraph each time he uses the dream sphere. It's just a really cool thing to include as a story. That's fair. That's a cool, that's a cool little detail, yeah. Moondrop began to turn, and the lights from the sphere flashed across Sam's face. The notes of his book floated through the air once more. Then he witnessed the Declaration of Independence being signed. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Declaration of Independence is canon to FNAF now. He witnessed the Declaration of Independence being signed, followed by the historical timeline for voting rights. He watched George Washington take the oath to become the first president. He's basically watching Hamilton. Uh, he witnessed treaties and laws being passed. He glimpsed wars being fought, which upset him. How do you write like you're running out of time? Uh, and then finally, it was as if the entire contents of the book had slipped into his mind like a human computer downloading a file. He was starting to feel like some kind of genius with so much knowledge packed into his brain. He felt himself tremble from the intensity and the amount of information he had witnessed. <laughs> These gifts. I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, but then it changes and he's no longer part of the history book projection. In the next moment, the scene changed, but he found himself in a small park. He doesn't recognize this from the history book, but somehow he feels familiarity in the park. He hears his watch ringing. The 15 minutes is up, but for some reason he pushes, pushes it away. He refuses to wake up. He embraces the dream because of how it strangely resonates within him. Nobody was there in the park until he saw someone he recognised. Hey bud, let's play tag, you're it. Dad? The word seemed to echo in his mind. Yeah, this is part of history, Sam's history. He feels safe, protected and at ease in the presence of his father. In that moment, he is no longer present day Sam, he's a child again. I love this. This is amazing. Um... He chases after his dad, but he can't keep up with him as usual. He loses his dad and he's left alone. Dad, you're too fast. Come on, catch me. That's the game. Then Sam lost him. He was gone. Sam looked around a little nervous. Dad, where are you? But then something suspicious happens. He spotted something blue and grey shift at the corner of his eye. Oh, I knew Moondrop had to come into this at some point. Okay. Oops. Uh, he watched the figure go, but there was nothing, only a tree. He could have sworn he saw the figure go behind the tree at the corner of his eye. But then his dad came out from behind the tree. <laughs> gotcha, his dad said. You scared me. They both laughed really hard as his dad picked him up and swung him around in a big circle. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, he has taken from the memory and awoken again. This is where he starts to take an emotional turn. Uh, warning. Uh, he was still laughing from the memory as he woke up in real life. He was still laughing until he was crying. He sat there in the quiet for a long time, experiencing the lost memory over and over again in his mind. Uh, in the moment of grief, he goes to, into the hallway closet to look for an old memorabilia of his dad. His mom is home and asks him what he's looking for. He's caught off guard that she's here as he's grieving. And he tells her what he's looking for, memorabilia of his dad. He doesn't want his mom to know what he had just witnessed inside the sphere. I don't know, I, don't, I want to remember him. Uh, she helps him look through the old boxes, finding his dad's old motorcycle keys, and, a cool detail here, when his dad was a kid, he owned a CD player with headphones to listen to music, not a VHS cassette, meaning it's staying in respect to the stories being in the future. Ah, oh, I see. So that means this, this Like Lally's game is like in the future rather than before Security Breach? That's interesting. That's a, that's a good point. Uh, wireless headphones with batteries, actually. Uh, his mum shows him photographs of his dad, and in that moment he realised how familiar he and his dad were at their age. He takes his dad's CD player and headphones going into his room alone to listen to the music his dad, he, he, dad, yeah, his dad listened to. In his own words, he wishes to find more memories. He closed his eyes as he listened to slow rock music, <coughs> thinking of his dad as he drifted to sleep. It drifts... Uh, it, it time skips to the next day where he receives his test results in government class. Wouldn't you know it, witnessing the embodiment of knowledge in the Declaration of Independence does grant you with intelligence. He aced the test, getting 115% on his score at counting extra credit. What? 
How is that even possible? I don't... What? <laughs> his teacher notices the unnatural improvement in his work. You're at the top of the grading curve now. I'm glad you're putting more effort into your studies. Got every question right. Thank you, Moondrop. Um, his friend Jules, uh, the, the prick of the group, nudges him and asks him when he's going to hand the sphere over. He does not want to hand it over yet. He, <laughs> he tells Jules to go away, and that it's not his sphere, and to go to Rad if he wants to get pissy over it because it's his turn. He realised he had been caught up in thinking about the sphere that he didn't let Jules push him around. He's getting power hungry. Oh my gosh. Sometimes he would hang out with the guys at the bleachers and joke for half an hour, but not today. He was eager to use the dream sphere. Eager to feel good, to feel energised, experienced. He is getting drugged, my friends. Um, he is going home immediately to see this dream sphere and is thinking of notes to study because he wants to see if he can catch another memory of his father during them. Hey, it wasn't the same as looking at a picture of his dad. The dreams felt more than just dreams. It was like he was reliving that fun memory. It made them almost real again. Um, for those who don't know, this is word for word how Talbot described Remnant. Oh! It makes them almost real again. Oh no, so it's... So it's a remnant dream sphere? Like, oh, totally, because it's memories, right? Wait, wait. If we're talking about, like, agony here, right? <clears throat> or uh, we're talking about remnant, I know, but, like, agony, you pour it into an object, and then it holds a memory, right? I, at least that, uh, that's kind of how I feel it works. That's definitely how it worked with, like, Into the Pit, right? It was probably Oswald's dad's memory, uh, and then Oswald was experiencing that memory firsthand. It made them feel almost real again. It wasn't real, though. It was just a memory. It, he wasn't actually time-travelling. It just felt real. Because it was remnant and agony and things like that. So that that is a good explanation for this. That is very cool. Okay. That is a great detail, Anton. Thank you for that. Uh, ever since his dad had been gone, <coughs> his family was intruded by an empty void. When he experienced that memory, that hole had been briefly filled and overflowing. He wanted to experience it all again. Immediately, he hooks the dream sphere up by adding into his apple. He sets the watch for 15 minutes, but he realised something. The memory of his dad last time appeared after 15 minutes he sat on his watch. So he wonders, maybe an, another extra fifth, five minutes. Oh no. The sphere is actively enticing him to give it more time. <coughs> But, for some reason, there was a familiar voice in the back of his mind telling him that it might not be such a good idea, but he squashed it back. The light spun, the heavy seat feeling sunk into his body, and the study notes came alive. He experienced ocean science on a new level. Uh, he could feel that the oceans were very old, ancient. Billions of years of history could be told through the oceans. He hesitated to take in this much information. Was it too much for the human mind to handle? Then, the scene shifted. Remember that apple? Yeah, for some reason the dream sphere detected the apple and it immediately projects in front of him, showing a diagram of notes and exactly how the anatomy of an apple works. Funky. Yes. <clears throat> and then a memory came to him, the next shift in the sphere. It's a memory of his mom and dad taking him on a road trip to an amusement park. But wait, it wasn't the only memory. Suddenly it shifted again. It changed to him and his dad at the beach. A funny memory of Sam as a toddler trying to grab a seagull, to which it screamed and flew away. The next memory, he was at a zoo with his dad, watching the gorillas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello? What? Okay. Smaller monkeys made Sam laugh as they swung from trees and picked at one another. His dad picked at Sam's hair like the monkeys were, and they began laughing as they playfully picked each other's hair. He's then shifted into multiple memories of his life at once. Sam could taste the salty air as if he was really there and feel the grainy sand on his skin. They were the best moments of his life. It seemed Sam had forgotten all the wonderful memories they'd had together, or perhaps he had had them buried deep within his mind, because remembering had hurt. <clears throat> uh, suddenly he woke from his dream, his alarm finished beeping, he wasn't too sad this time, he was content to relive those memories again. After this he feels the need to just, to just go to sleep for real, once again turning on the CD player with his father's music and replaying the memory home movie in his mind over and over again. But he wakes up not realising how long he'd spaced out for. He's disoriented and has a drowsy feeling he can't really explain. 
The night passes and he finds his mum in his room inspecting the dream sphere. Oh no. For some reason, he feels the need to get defensive over the sphere. He feels violated at the fact someone else is observing it without his permission. Lol. I'm not intense about the sphere. She gave him the mum stare that he knew so well. A look that basically said, get real. <laughs> okay. Um... This reminded me of uh, Lally's game, where Cade was getting defensive over Lally, <clears throat> I guess. Or, like, the game is only for two. That's kind of a good point, I think. I, I'm not saying there's a connection, it just, it's just reminding me of that. Uh, the moment his mum left his room, he stopped feeling tense. He sat on his bed and picked up the sphere. Moondrop stared at him with red eyes. He then says something to Moondrop. If she only knew how truly great you are, she wouldn't be giving me a hard time about you. He felt a strange vibration coming from the sphere again and felt the urge to give the dream sphere another go. Maybe just another ten minutes, he thought. He heard his mother whistling in the other room that made him change his mind. He could wait another day until after school. It then time skips to later in the middle of the night. An interesting thing happens to Sam. During the night he tossed and turned. He could sense the sphere sitting beside him on this little table. He didn't look at it, but he knew it was there. He feel He's feeling drawn to his sphere. Uh, some strange presence he can't reject. It's luring him in, calling to him. He can't handle it. It's becoming a part of him. Oh my gosh. That's so good. You know what I love about this? Is, at the moment, there's like no real threat apart from Sam. Uh, and, like, and Moondrop, of course. But, like, we were only introduced to Moondrop once in the corner of his eye. And it kind of made us all kind of question what's happening where Moondrop truly is. Like, that's kind of, it's kind of strange. But yeah, at the moment, it's kind of Sam doing this to himself. Like, he is becoming a part of, part of the dream sphere himself. He needs to let go uh, of, uh, of, like, he needs to accept that his dad has, has passed away in, in a horrible accident, and he needs to move on from that. But he is not. He is keeping the dream sphere to himself. I love that. That is great. Uh, I forgot where I was. Some strange person you can't reject. It's luring him. It's becoming a part of him. He took off the sheets and rolled to the side. Moondrop stared right at him. For a split second, he thought the red eyes flashed bright. He blinked and the light was gone. His shoulders were stiff and his legs were restless. He couldn't relax. He needed to touch the sphere. But when he touched the sphere, he suddenly felt calm. All the uncomfortable feelings went away when he's with, these, when he's with this orb. <clears throat> Uh, still having the un uh, the awful urge to turn it on when let go, he decided to resist it with all his will and unplug the sphere. He got up, unplugged the sphere, placed the globe in a closet and closed the door. Cuts the next day and when he wakes up and goes to school, he feels different. He can't focus. Described as a brain fog, he felt disconnected. What you are witnessing in real time is how soul splitting works. For the first time, we're witnessing the process of soul transfer. The sphere is taking his soul. Brilliant story. It hasn't even ended. <laughs> this is so good. So it's um, it is taking his soul. It's pour. It's pouring the agony. It's like, kind of like a black hole, I guess. Right. Anyone who uses it, a little bit of soul comes out of them. It's now an extension of him. He sits in class, just staring at the whiteboard the whole time, missing the whole period, dazing in and out of reality. I love that. That is brilliant because it has two meanings. It's like a lot of a lot of people days in and out of reality, like they, they just kind of like blank out, empty space. But in this context, he kind of is just dazing out of reality into a different kind of world in another way. Uh, until Dr. Jules comes in and snaps in his face, tells him he spaced out the entire class. He hadn't realized it was time for dismissal. Uh, Jules accidentally bumps into Sam when he's getting up. Watch where you're going, he says, and Jules mocks him back before saying, you watch where you're going, and bumps into him intentionally. He hates Jules. Throughout the day, he feels this new irritation he'd never felt before. Being separated from the sphere has hurt him emotionally to a horrible extent. He is now angry and wishing to be alone from everyone else, dis distancing himself. People are beginning to notice. At his locker, he comes across Lydia, who is his crush. Hi, sorry, I was distracted. He's talking to her and she says, um, I was thinking, and he interrupts her by saying he's got to go. Oh, well, okay then. <laughs> okay. Uh, he fucked his opportunity up. Yep, yeah, too true. 
Uh, why was it that when he wanted to talk to others, he was ignored, but when he wished to be alone, everyone would not stop bothering him? He wanted to be by himself. He's now at the bleachers with the boys. He's irritated by everyone and is being mean to Rad. Gonna take a small break. I haven't seen my bird all day. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Love. Okay. <clears throat> what? Uh, so at the bleachers, right, he's being rude to Rad and Rad's like, hey man, alright, it's all good. Giving him space and whatnot. Good guy, Rad. Jules. Uh, I think the dream sphere is making him wig out. I think it's time to pass it on to the next person who can handle it. Me. All the girls are fighting. You're probably freaking obsessed with it, he said, freak. Sam clenching his hands. If you're not going to use it, hand over, Jules said. It's at home, jerkwad. What did you just call me? Jules said back. Actual FNAF quotes. I know. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> Jules stepped toward him at the bleachers. You heard me, Sam said. Let's all calm down, Rad said. Always the peacemaker. They dead ass almost just fought and threw hands over the dream sphere. But the guy separated them and told them to calm down. Sam is tired of this, and instead of calming down, he just ditches the scene. He's tired of this. Uh, now, Sam is isolating himself from everyone. He's sitting alone in the corner at lunch, thinking about his dad. He wished he was at home he w when he could drift into a lucid state, where no one could bother him or tell him he was acting the wrong way, where he was free from anxiety, where life was safe. Now he's walking down the sidewalk home, barely even aware of the world around him. He's just sitting there, moping. He then stops by a bus stop and looks up. It's an ad for the Mega Pizzaplex. Oh, okay, so we're not that far into the future. He looked at Glamrock Freddy, Roxanne Wolf, Glamrock Chica, and Montgomery Gator. No Glamrock Bonnie. Beep, beep, beep. Looking happy and cheerful together. He walked further and he saw the snow globes in the window for sale. Above the door to the shop, bells were hung in jingles. Everything reminded him of the Dream Sphere. Moondrop's Dream Sphere. Ah. Um. Wait, did it say when in the year this was? I don't think it did. Well, it's it's during school time, at least. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm trying to look for lore, because like, I do the timeline videos as well, so I want to look for, uh, for dates and stuff. Um, when he was arguing with Jules, he made a promise to his friends not to obsess over the spheres, and he wasn't using it anymore. He wanted to prove to him. Many himself that he didn't need the dream sphere uh, as an escape to see his dad, but now he realises it's a part of him. Basically, it doesn't matter what others thought he thinks to himself, it was the only place where he felt safe and protected. He lets go of that promise, they wouldn't know if he did it. He went home immediately into his room and opened the closet, picking up the dream sphere and plugging it in. Hey, the lights flashed, Moondrop spun, and Sam felt his emotions level out. He was right where he needed to be. Ah. Um, we're reaching the climax of the story, okay, cool. This time, it doesn't even tell us the dreams he had, other than he was in a state of calm and ease with the sphere near him. When he went to the bathroom to lo look in the mirror, however, he was paler than usual, dark circles under his eyes. His disconnection to reality is getting worse, and physically, he's getting weaker. He now is getting into arguments with his mum. Lots of argument filler there. Isolating himself from everyone. Now he's skipping the day at school because he does not feel physically well, and uses that opportunity to use the dream sphere. It's calling to him still. This time, he didn't even have to wait for the memory to come. He was immediately thrown into the memory. It's the memory of him and his dad, together on a father and son motorcycle ride. He's a young kid again, and uh, but, I, but he can still think in two places at once, in the period of where his memories were replaying, and also in present state, exactly like what Larson witnessed. Right, yeah, okay. Uh, they're stopping at a rest place to have a picnic that Sam's mum had packed for them on the ride. They sit down together in the grass, eating together. His dad speaks to him in the memory. Sam. Dad started as they sat. I'm glad we could have these rides together. Me too, Dad. You know, when you get older, I want you to experience things that are out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to try new things. Go on adventures with your friends. Explore the world. Discover what makes you happy and experience it as much as you can. Wow. That's... Wow. Sam nodded, his mouth full of sandwiches. Uh, or f full of sandwich. <laughs> Okay, Dad. Above that, I want you to remember to make good and responsible choices. Be a strong man. Do what's right. When you make a choice in life, there will always be re repercussions, good or bad, depending on the action you take. Uh-huh, Sam said. His dad smiled. You may not understand how, but hopefully you'll remember this conversation when you need to. Oh! Is his dad more important than we think? Like, does his dad know? Hmm. 
did his did his dad make the dreams fair? I don't know. <laughs> Is his dad William Afton? Um, you'll be there to remind me, right? Sam asked. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Sam? As in Sammy? Did, was his dad Henry? <laughs> no, <laughs> it can't be. It cannot be. Uh, I'm joking. Uh, dad chuckled. I'll remind you, son. Sam frowned as he relived the memory. He's done the opposite of what his dad had wanted. He'd become a cautious kid that barely tried anything new or adventurous. It had all started the night his dad died. He tried to be careful then on out. And when he felt out of his comfort zone, the anxiety kicked in. His dad had been uh, his sense of safety. Without him, Sam had built himself a cocoon. He thought by doing this and informing himself to be overly cautious about his decisions, he'd be safe. But what he hadn't realised was that he was depriving himself of new experiences that could be okay. Experiences that could bring him the joy he'd lost when his dad was gone. Yeah, yeah, it's about moving on. He didn't want to be a disappointment to his dad. He wanted to be a kid dad could be proud of. He didn't want to live in the, uh, in the life of fear that everything could go wrong for him. The alarm sounded. He tried to reach up to turn the dream sphere off, but he couldn't. His body was too exhausted to move. Suddenly, his mind was forced into another memory. In this memory, it was him in his old house, his morning before school. Uh, he was eating the cereal before his dad got ready to go to work. See you later, buddy. His dad ruffled his hair. I love you, son. Sam was too young to understand this at the time. He was too busy watching the TV to understand. In the distance, his dad... Uh, he hears his dad's motorcycle. This isn't a good memory, he realises. No, Sam said, trying to pull himself out of the lucid dream. He didn't want to experience this again. Suddenly, he was forced into another memory. It altered reality around him. He was no longer in his house. He was after school. Uh, he was after school, his mum picking up from school. She was crying. They were driving to the hospital. It's your dad's sound. He's been in an accident. Her voice resonated in the dream. He was scared, reliving the memory over again. He started to resist it more and more, trying to break out from the memory. Stop! I don't want to see this. Finally, he swung his arm out with one swipe of energy and turned the sphere off. He was breathing heavily, regaining his composure. Then his mum came bursting into the room, but she looked younger and she was crying. The memory echoed. Sam, it's your dad. He's been in an accident. He jerked his head toward the dream sphere. The little jester was still. But then he started turning again as the little lights flashed from the sphere. The lights grew brighter, and as he looked back at his mum, he was sucked into a memory again. He was at the hospital in the waiting room, reliving the moment his dad had passed. In all of his will to get out, he rejected it. He began realising something was wrong for the first time. He had been delusional. Since using the dream sphere, his sense of reality was blurring. He was losing control. Finally, he for real, yes, shattered the memory and escaped it. He was done. He had to do the right thing. He was going to return the sphere to Rad. He no longer wanted the sphere. He no longer wanted to sleep again with the thought he was going to undergo that pain. He was now an empty person. So much of him has been taken away that the blood vessels in his eyes were starting to burst. He's losing vision, symbolical for the sense of losing reality as he lost himself. Despite all that had happened, he couldn't reverse it. All he had to do was return it to Rad. It now skips to in to him in front of Rad's home. He had made his way despite being blurred, knocking on the door. Nobody was home. He turned the door uh, and it was unlocked. <clears throat> there he saw Brutus and he's scared of Brutus. Thankfully, Brutus is friendly and recognised Sam as friend. Uh, that relieved Sam. Then he walked around the house and called for Rad's name. His parents weren't home because they were out of work. Then he remembered that he had taken the day off school. <laughs> no shit, they weren't going to be home. That's so funny. <laughs> he decides to dial Rad and he answers. Rad tells him that it's chill and that he's glad he's handing over the dream sphere, but he tells Gunn to go ahead and sit because all the guys are going to go over for a study session, so he should wait until they get there. He hung up, they'd be home in about 20 minutes or so. He hangs up after the discussion and sits the dream sphere on the coffee table and he sits down waiting. But then the dream sphere begins vibrating. He couldn't help it. He touched the sphere and it felt warm. Remember when his mum said he was cold? All that warmth went to the sphere. He sat the sphere down and again and crossed his arms, then uncrossed them as the lure of the sphere seemed to pull him in against his better judgment. And then he looked at Moondrop and spoke to him. 25 minutes. I think it's a perfect time for one last experience with you. I don't want my last lucid dream to be of my dad dying. He blinked. He felt his emotions all over the place. More connected to Moondrop before. He told him one thing. Give me one last memory, the best one. Moondrop had heard him. And then, 
it began to move on its own. It was his happiest day. Oh my god. This is so lore centric. Genuinely. <clears throat> I'm so surprised at how good Tails is. Oh my gosh. His dad was alive and his mum was set selling her artwork as she did now. His family was together again. The dream reality was how he wished his life to be. Wait, it was his happiest day. He just died. Okay, okay, I get you. I get you. I'm assuming this is how, how, how it's going, right? It's his happiest day because... He's just died, uh, he, he, like, he has passed away, his soul is gone from his body, and he is now in his happiest day in the dream sphere, I assume. That's how it's going, right? <clears throat> to clarify, everything not in the green text, to, what, in the green text, what? Everything not in the in green text is just me paraphrasing things in the book for a live reading effect, just to make it more fun. Everything in green text is said in the book directly. Green texts? Oh, you mean like these things? I don't know. I, I, yeah. I think this is, I think these are like quoting the book and these aren't. But this is a really weird way to put it. it green? Like what? <laughs> it then skips to Rad's perspective and he's in the parking lot after school waiting for the other guys. But for some reason, he senses unease as if something was disturbing him. Something didn't feel right. Good news. Sam's got the dream sphere back in my house. Jules said that was great. But he said that they should actually meet up with Sam at the Mega Pizzaplex. Wait, what? Okay. Jules' friend Davis works there, and he said they're opening up a new arcade game, but Davis would sneak them in to play it first. Rod texted Sam, telling him there was a change of plans and to meet the guys at the Pizzaplex first, but Sam never responded. He then put it back into Sam's happiest day dream bubble, and he's at school on the bleachers just as it was in real life. Sam offers Jules... Then you can give the, him the sphere back, but then he says, what sphere? Sam smiled because he realised they were already in the sphere. Only he knew about the sphere here. Oh my god, this is amazing. I'm going to skip over these bits of dialogue because it's just descriptions of him going through this reality. But he still needs to face his fears despite being in the sphere. Some part of him still needs to let go of his fears. He needed to face them before moving on. Uh, he beat Jules in an arm wrestling match. One fear down, and a funny one, but then something even greater was pulling his unease. His phone started ringing, Rad's house phone. That reminded him he was still in the dream state still, and it really, really bothered him a lot, because it was giving him the reality he was asleep. He didn't want to be asleep, he wanted the phone to be off. The tension is getting worse. He tries to pause the memory to break free momentarily to shut the phone off. He couldn't resist, or oh, sorry, he couldn't rest with this thought. If you don't get what's going on, Basically, he's in two realities at once, still trying to move on. Right, right. This is really good writing. This is really cool. Uh, he's going to end up in the sphere, though, with his happiest day. I, I, I'm telling you. He realised what was really bothering him. He remembers he didn't plug in the sphere. Oh, how is the sphere moving on its own? That's amazing. But please wake me up, he cried out. Because of his fear of Brutus, suddenly Brutus isn't so friendly in the other half of reality still stuck in place. Suddenly he's aggressive and trying to come close to him. Oh my gosh. This is great. Um, I think you can get what the last fear he has to face is. He's calling out for Brutus to stop. In the dream reality, Dream Rad can hear him. What are you talking about? Brutus is at home. In the other reality, Brutus is tearing his face off. Oh my god. And he's starting to feel agonizing pain as if the last part of him is fading away. Uh, this is amazing. Brutus is tearing his face off. Could you could you relate that to Moondrop? Right? Because he only has a crescent moon uh, as a face, right? Uh, unlike Sun. Focuses on raw reality and he's crawling into the bathroom. Half his face torn off and seeping into the sink. In the reflection, Moondrop is standing behind, behind him watching. I'm sorry to stop again, but I'm, I'm thinking of duality here. Two realities. You have sun and moon, again, right? You have the real reality as the sun, and then you have the moon reality where he's freaking got half his face torn off now. Uh, yeah, I actually feel like that's a good interpretation as well. Sun and moon duality, kind of their uh, contrast as well. The pain is apparently so unbearable until the jester waved. His bell on his wrist chimed and Sam went still. He let go of the sink and stood very straight. The terror disappeared. He felt completely calm and at peace. He's passing on. He let go of his fears and his comfort zone. 
he turned and smiled at Moondrop. Moondrop uh, turned to walk out the door, and Sam followed Moondrop to see what new adventures they would create together. He took his hand and they left. Meanwhile, on Rad's coffee table, Moondrop continued to gleefully turn in a circle, waving his hand, and slowly stopped. Huh, okay. So, so let's, let's, um, let's read through his, and Tom's explanation of this. So, Sam basically moved on and was encased in the dream sphere, yes. He became the character Moondrop that was, he became the character Moondrop that was in the sphere. Hence why he took his hand and went together like the ending of coming home with Chica and Susie. I agree. I totally agree. Uh, Sam is not Moondrop in Security Breach, if that's what you're thinking. He's the Moondrop that was in his specific dream sphere. Much like in Dance With Me, how, like, the Ballora in the glasses was not the real Ballora. We know that Eleanor was behind that story anyway. But that was not the Ballora. That doesn't mean that um, Casey was being chased by... Ballora Ballora, it, she was being chased by a projection of Ballora or whatever. Um, so yeah, that was great. Okay, that was amazing. I really loved the aspects, as I was saying, of the duality. Of the fact that he was living in two different realities at once. That was really cool, and I think this is a really original concept that we haven't seen much of. Again, it's looking into fake realities, and I'm really trying to piece together what this means for Security Breach. I do think it's just more to add on to Princess Quest, but I'm going to have to think about this more. Uh, the Dream Sphere is really interesting with the Remnant uh, explanation with it. Uh, and Moondrop is, is great in this, even though he's not really much of a villain, I would say. Like, he, he is a presence... He's, he's like, what is what is Moondrop doing to, to him? But he's not really a villain. Uh, and that's not really a bad thing, right? Because, like I said before, Sam is doing this to himself. Uh, and, yeah, that's amazing. I really love the part with Brutus, honestly. That's amazing, the way he tore his face off in one reality or whatever. But he was nice to him in the other. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This, is, this took way longer than I thought it would, but... um. We, are, we will be doing the other stories as well soon enough. So uh, stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this. Tell me if you did. And uh, I will see you later. Goodbye.